Hi, it's Christine Gallagher, the founder of She's Got Clients.com and the Impact Academy Business School, where we teach our students marketing and mindset strategies to create a more amazing business and life. And today I want to talk to you about delegation, specifically the what, when, and how of delegation, along with a couple of things you should never do when it comes to delegating. The good news is delegation can be learned. I certainly wasn't born knowing how to delegate effectively, and I think most of us are not, but it is something that is a learnable skill. And Stephen Covey says, your job as a leader is to inspire and extend trust by delegating. And I love the way he says that because I hadn't really thought of it that way before. And yes, we're all leaders. We're leaders of our company. We're leaders of people that we work with, and we really need to see ourselves that way. So the first question is, when do you actually delegate? Well, we all know that when we're becoming really stressed or really stretched or we're working too many hours in our business, it's time to get some things off of our plate. So those are definite red flags. But also, if you find yourself doing things you don't enjoy day to day in your business, that's a major red flag. Also, when you're doing things that prevent the company from growing, because sometimes we become the bottleneck in our business and those are all really good signs that it's time to delegate. Now, what about the what. So you can delegate almost anything, really, if you think about it, but just some specifics to get you thinking about your own business. You can delegate travel planning, certain aspects of social media, doing your email newsletter, posting blog posts, updating software. There's so many things that you can get off your plate, but remember, it's especially good to start with the things that you don't like and don't enjoy. Now, what about the how? This is probably the trickiest part. And again, Covey has a really good way of looking at this. He gives it three steps. He says, first, in order to delegate effectively, you want to declare your intent, meaning what is the why behind what you're delegating to somebody on your team? They're more likely to take ownership when they understand the context. How does this task tie into the overall vision or the overall goals of the company? It's really good to give them that understanding from the start. And then number two is about clarifying expectations. So this could include sharing what the follow-up time is, how many times you want them to check in, what the milestones are. Again, more context because you can't assume that people know what it is you want exactly unless you tell them. And I know I've been guilty of drive-by delegating in the past and it's something I had to really unlearn so that I could be more specific and not assume anything when it comes to delegation. And then the third thing is to practice accountability, meaning the ultimate goal is for you to shift to expecting people to just allow you to come into their workspace every day and check on them multiple times, see what they're doing, see what they're doing, and shift more to accountability in the sense that you're having them report to you, right? So it's training them how to be even more accountable. And I think that's really smart. Now, what you never want to do when it comes to delegation is do things that you hate on a daily basis. We mentioned this earlier, but it bears repeating. If you are doing things over and over that you don't enjoy, you are going to prevent your company's growth. You're going to sap your energy and your passion, and it's just not fun. So that's the first thing. The second thing is don't remove yourself completely from your team. You know, delegation can almost become addictive once you get good at it, but you want to be connected to reality and you still want to be connected to your team. So you don't want to completely completely remove yourself from the equation. All right, so what about your to-dos around this? Well, first of all, if you do have team members, always appreciate them and be grateful for them and express gratitude to them. But if you're not already delegating or you don't have team members, take a look at where in your business you are being overly stretched and strained. And these are tasks that think and things that you might not enjoy as well. That's a great place to start when it comes to delegation. So I want you to look at your business and the big picture and see where those places are in your business because that's a really good place to get started. The first thing I ever delegated in my business was my email newsletter because it was taking too much time for me to actually put it together and all the technology behind it and the template. I just wanted to create the content and delegate it. And that's the first thing that I did. All right, so this is Christine signing off. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you know somebody who needs help with understanding how to delegate effectively, please share this with them. And if you're not getting these videos on a regular basis from me, be sure to put your name and your email in the boxes in this page so you don't miss another one. All right, I'll see you on our next video.